Welcome back, Ligari Nation. Today we're showing you an epoxy countertop application using our new epoxy pigments. We used milk chocolate and camel for these countertops. Our epoxy countertops can be used directly over your existing countertops like formica, granite, wood, and more. To get your epoxy today, check the description below. Now let's get started. Once your counters are prepped, right, primer down, edges are taped, we can draw a design so it's easy to follow, easy to pour out um, the epoxy. So whatever shape, kind of design, maybe flow that you're going for, you can map it out with a Sharpie. Um, it's real simple. So we're gonna kind of just do some random curves in this counter. So we're gonna just, similar to like our stone kits, right? And this is just gonna give us something to follow to where we're not really thinking about it when we're dumping it out. The main thing is we don't want to pour too much in one area. Like say you're doing islands, different areas of the counter, you want to kind of jump around, make sure you're getting the same color, even amounts of color all through the counter. Um, but again, there's a lots of different ways you can pour it out. You guys can pour it out however you want. You could do straight lines if you want. There, it's endless ways. This is just an example. Um, and so I'm going to start and just start following one of these lines that we have here. And again, I want to make sure I get this color all through the whole project that I'm coating. Next thing we want to do once we get it all dumped out is we're going to take our squeegee and we're just going to blend the color. So you notice we have spots where the epoxy is not at. Um, all we're trying to do is just soft blend, right? The more you blend, the more the colors are going to make another color. So again, there's lots of different ways you guys can do your kits. Maybe you want to blend it more, um, but it's always good to start out with less and then you can go back and blend it more. If you over blend it, you can't really unblend it. So just keep that in mind.
maybe have a spot you don't necessarily like, you can still kind of tweak it. The resin's so thick, um, and that's why we dam up that edge because we're using so much resin, and that's how we get these cool effects. It's been about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Again, guys, temperature dependent. So the best way is to just keep checking, pulling that tape down, making sure it's not running too fast. Biggest thing is you don't wanna to wait too long to pull it because the resin will set up and then it's not gonna to wanna to flow over that edge enough, especially if you have you know, thicker edges, maybe a three inch edge, you might wanna pull it a little sooner. Worst case scenario, if you pull it late and it's not really flowing, you can kind of heat that up with a heat gun um, to kind of uh, thin that resin out and get it to flow. Um, but it's always better to pull it a little sooner than later. See how it's kind of sagging and just slowly moving? That's about the right time. Could pull it a little sooner and be fine. Problem is if you pull it too soon when it's really runny like it was in the beginning, again, it's gonna drag your design off. It's gonna mess up your edges. It's not gonna look as natural. So now we're just gonna simply pull the tape. And then for some reason, if you have drips the next day, you can simply sand those 100 grit palm sander just to knock that bottom edge flush. But again, if you can stay on top of it um, and get those edges, edges cut before it hardens up, you won't have to sand those drips off.